IU basketball was back on Monday, and they for sure started off on the right foot. You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? It is Tuesday, November 8th, a fantastic Tuesday because IU basketball is back and victorious. I'm your host, as always, Jacob Rude. I want to thank you for making Locked on Hoosiers your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. I think IU actually ended up covering on Monday. They made it uh, interesting for quite a while. We'll certainly talk about all of that. But in the end, the Hoosiers come away with an 88-53 to win over Moorhead State. To me, the biggest thing and biggest takeaway about this game was just how good IU's bench is and figures to be this season. That's a roundabout way of me talking about Malik Renault without immediately talking about Malik Renault as we've done repeatedly during the exhibitions. Every time he has stepped on the floor, he has impressed more and more. I didn't even mean for that to rhyme either. On Monday, he only plays 17 minutes, but finishes with 15 points, six of eight shooting and a plus 23. Uh, he made a big impact In the first half, um, he kept Trace Jackson Davis on the bench, which, again, we'll talk about. uh, But it was a bench unit that made the biggest impact in that first half and in the game as a whole. Malik Renew, uh, Renew, Tamar Bates, Trey Galloway, Jordan Geronimo, they were led by Jalen hood Shafino at the point guard. That group is, I think, group you're going to see most often as your bench lineup. We mentioned that Hood Shafino and Xavier Johnson were going to stagger. That was a little bit easier on Monday because Jay, or, uh, Xavier Johnson got in foul trouble right away, but uh, Hood Shafino played 27 minutes, which was the most on the team. He kind of had to because he was uh, right after he checked out in the first half. Xavier Johnson picked up the foul. He had to come back in. He looked fantastic. We're talking about uh, freshmen that stood out. Hood Shafino's mid-range uh, jumpers are going to be a glorious sight to see. He had seven points, four assists, couple rebounds. Just the way he run, ran the offense, um, either with the starters or with the bench, there's poise there. He looks like a guy that knows how to run a college basketball offense. And that's saying something considering this was his first real game. And so – Really impressed by him, but Malik Renew was fantastic, man. Uh, He just, we talked about in these exhibition games, he was physically overpowering people, but you kind of expected him to physically overpower people uh, because they were NAIA schools. Well, he went up against Division I guys and still was doing the exact same thing. Got to the line for six attempts. He only made three of them. IU did not shoot well from the free throw line. They started one of seven. They finished 12 of 21. That's 11 of 14 to finish, but the one of seven still happened. Um, but Malik uh, led that bench unit. Look, it, last season we talked a lot about how IU struggled when they had these all bench lineups on the floor. It They very much did. I thought that was a habit. Mike Woodson brought with him from the NBA. You can run five guys from the bench. Uh, even there, it doesn't um, it, it doesn't happen a lot, but you can run five guys from the bench in the NBA. You can't do that on most college basketball teams. Now, granted, I use not going to run five guys from the bench because Jalen Hood Shafino or Xavier Johnson is going to be the point guard, but the rest of those guys being a bench unit is going to happen a lot. You saw on Monday how impactful they can be. Uh, You have the ball handling with Jalen, with Galloway, with Tamar. 
the athleticism and strength in the front court with Geronimo and Malik. Um, defensively, they absolutely locked in. Uh, Moorhead State made this a game at 21-21. Um, and then the defense locked in, forced a number of turnovers, got defensive stops. I believe it was about a 13-0 run that this group uh, largely went on to open this game back up, and IU never trailed or was tied the rest of the way. Uh, so it was that extended run that um, not just kept them on the floor, but kept Trace Jackson Davis. Uh, I would say Xavier Johnson fouls kept him on the bench. But, I mean, if IU was struggling, maybe – uh, Mike Woodson risks it and puts him in with two fouls. He didn't really do that a lot last year, so I don't know that he would have. But it kept, kept a race Thompson. It kept those guys on the bench because uh, the the reserves were playing as well as they did. Ultimately, IU ended up with 45 bench points. That number's inflated because it was a blowout in garbage time. You had C.J. Gunn. Caleb Banks played. There's no red shirt there. Um, Logan Duncan, those guys came in and, and got some points. But – uh, this bench very clearly is going to be a huge bonus for IU this season. We saw it on Monday. We'll continue to see it throughout the year. The defense is something else I want to highlight. I, I kind of talked about it there. Uh, from that bench unit specifically, the defense was really good. Look, Trace Jackson Davis had a weird segment where he only played four minutes in the first half, came out. He played the first four minutes, came out, and didn't come back in until about Six minutes left in the first half. He ultimately played uh, 15 minutes. So I guess it was a little more than that. But regardless, he had this weird kind of stretch uh, where he wasn't on the floor. I think some of that was his defensive effort. But a lot of it was because that second unit was playing so well. IU forced 21 turnovers, 29 points off of those turnovers. Uh, they had 20 points off turnovers in the first half alone uh, because Moorhead State had 13 first half turnovers. So um, defensively, they locked up. Moorhead State only shot um, 37% from the field, 30% from the three-point line, and that was even with a pretty hot start. It was 40% from the field in the first half. Uh, they started out the first about – 10 minutes of that first half shooting well. It was 33% in the second half. So uh, a really strong start defensively from this group. Um, there's going to be questions about their offense, and they didn't answer all of them or many of them really <laughs> on Monday, but that defense carried over. And so long as that's the case, uh, they're going to stay in games and uh, they can figure out some things offensively along the way. Let's talk more about Trace. We didn't talk much about him. Trace, Xavier Johnson, a couple other odds and ends things uh, worth highlighting in this one. Before we do that, though, this week's thrilling moment in college football is brought to you by Nissan. The thrilling designs behind the new lineup from Nissan are intended to empower drivers in vehicles as capable as the drivers themselves. When I think of unbelievable abilities on the field, for this week's thrilling moment. Whew, that is a lot to ask of IU football. Um, I would say Taiwan Mullen, uh, his interception he had. Taiwan hasn't had a great year, and he didn't even really have a great game. Picked up, I believe, a personal foul penalty in this one as well. But uh, it was nice to see him get an interception. I think he's been on the the bad side of some ridiculous throws and ridiculous catches throughout the season. So it was nice to see him get a little bit of a reward. So we'll call his interception, tipped ball interception, the thrilling moment of the week. This segment has been inspired by the thrilling new designs featured across Nissan's new lineup of vehicles. Pursue what thrills you in the all new frontier Armada or Pathfinder today available now at NissanUSA.com. Big thanks to all you guys for making Locked On Hoosiers your first listen today and every day. For your second listen today, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, or wherever you guys listen to your podcasts at. 
Trish Jackson Davis, it's wild. He is kind of a almost an afterthought. He's a second segment story. Uh, at least on Monday he was. I don't think that's going to be the case often. It was a ho-hum, 15.7 rebounds, uh, one block that was absolutely enormous, two steals, only had to play 23 minutes. I say ho-hum and Jess. Uh, it was a loud six points because it was a number of dunks, as Trace is one to do. He looked comfortable, maybe too comfortable at times uh, in this one. He got to the rim, seemed like he could get whatever kind of post move he wanted, even though he shot 6 of 11. A couple of those were uh, easy ones that I think he would make in, in most games. So um, overall, it was a strong game from him. Like I said, I, I, I'd have to, I'll have to go back and watch um, – it seemed like IU came out a little bit flat with that starting group, although they, they went on a run early. Um, they let Moorhead State knock down some threes, which I'm going to assume was probably on the scouting report. I don't know how much of that was Trace's fault. He certainly came out for an extended period, but ultimately that may have had as much to do with the bench as anything else. Um, but he still performed great. And the chemistry him and Race Thompson have uh, – it's still there and still a lot of fun to watch. The drop-off passes to Race Thompson for the dunks, vice versa, are wonderful to see. Some high-low action between Race and Trace in this one as well. Uh, so a lot of fun to watch those two continue to work. There are 10 years of college basketball experience between them. That was mentioned on the broadcast today. Uh, and just hearing it said – just that way, basically. Um, it, it really puts into perspective how experienced these two are. There's not going to be many things you're going to throw at them that they have not seen before. So just further confidence in this team, in this front court. It's going to be a really fun year. Uh, Xavier Johnson. It's been a weird start to his season. Jalen hood Shafina looks like he has hit the ground running, uh, especially in kind of this double point guard setting that IU has. Xavier Johnson has not found his footing in the same manner. Um, he is, I mean, the two fouls in the first half were suboptimal, to say the least. Um, and that threw off his rhythm in this one. Uh, but ultimately, he finishes with four points, two of three shooting, a rebound, three assists, couple turnovers, three fouls, a steal in 20 minutes, and yet he finished a plus 11, made some impact late, had a nice uh, lob pass to Jordan Geronimo, who is a freak of nature athlete, to finish that one off. He's still finding his game. It's okay that he's still finding his game. It might take a little bit of time. I'm not necessarily worried about it, but, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's just a thing that, that exists. He, is, he hasn't really looked comfortable necessarily. He was aggressive early on. He got to the rim. His one miss was a layup on the left side of the rim that he tried to kind of flick in with some English with his right hand. I liked the drive to the rim. Use your left hand. but. Ultimately, um, not the best Xavier Johnson game, not the worst. There, ha there wasn't a lot of Xavier Trace pick and roll. And I don't know if that's something that they're hiding until a bigger game or it's not something that's going to be as much part of their offense. Trace wanted it to be. He talked about that during the summer. Maybe it's like college football where you're waiting to put that on tape until a really important game comes out. We'll see if that's the case, but I would suspect there'll be more Xavier Trace pick and roll down the line this season because that worked really, really well last year for the Hoosiers. One of the notes I had as well, Xavier's foul trouble early on feels like much less of a big deal because Jalen hood Shafino is out there. Um, he's someone that – Rob Finnessy was a very uh, – I mean, he was a good point guard. Jalen Hood-Shafino is better, and I, I just in general feel more comfortable now that 
If Xavier's going out, it's Jalen Hood Shafino. I, I think the problem with Rob and Xavier is that both had such high levels of variance that when Xavier went out, you weren't exactly sure if Rob was even going to have his own bad game. Uh, so far, there's a, a pretty high baseline of what to expect from Jalen Hood Shafino. Those worries don't appear to be there. A couple odds and ends things. Miller Cop knocked down a couple of threes. They were big kind of momentum threes as much as you can have momentum um, to, or as much as you can have momentum in a 30 point blowout. Uh, they were three pointers that blew the game open and got the crowd excited. Those threes feel like more than just a three pointer, basically the, the burst of energy and the roar from the crowd that comes with it. Uh, it feels like it's worth more than just three points. And he had a couple of those on Monday, which to that note, shout out to the assembly hall crowd. This was game one against Moorhead state on a Monday. They showed out that student section was loud as hell. Now they were loud as hell because uh, let's talk about Jake Wolf from Moorhead state. Uh, for those that did not see, he was a, or is a guard for Moorhead state. He knocked down a three pointer in front of the IU student section, turned around, gave him a little piece of his mind, proceeded to steal a pass, uh, down the court, like 10 seconds later, laid it in and shared more of his thoughts with the student section. That cut the lead to 47 to 34 at the time in the second half. IU then responded with a 21 to six run that included those Miller cop threes. Uh, IU was so excited because of they basically got in Jake Wolf's head. Like the Jake Wolf just kind of got IU fans more excited basically and amped them up more. <laughs> Jake Wolf ends up, with nine points, you saw five of them in that stretch. A game high five turnovers, a game high five fouls. He fouls out. Uh, it was a 21 to six immediate run, 39 to 15 extended run. Uh, he was a minus 26 in 26 minutes. Big shout out to him for getting IU and IU's fans going. There's a lot of trash talk in this game. Thanks to him for that. I, I, I don't know about trash talking the opposing fans when you're down double digits anyway, uh, especially when it helps Spurs on a big run to blow the game open. Uh, it's questionable decision-making, but we thank him for it. Um, we'll talk more about this game um, moving forward, but I use women's team plays tonight, and I want to preview that one uh, before we head out here. So. Let's talk about that first, though. Let's talk about Bet Online. We mentioned them earlier that IU, I believe, covered. Um, I did not look up the betting lines beforehand because betting on preseason or not preseason, early season college basketball games is not my cup of tea, I guess will be the best way of putting it. Um, the Hoosiers. What I would suggest, I was trying to think of the best way to say this. What I would suggest is if IU is down or tied 21-21, head on over there and and double down on the, the live bets and the spread and all that because that tends to be the case in these overmatched non-conference games that there's a point where things are tied. And if you're really confident in your team, um, then – but basically double down on them on the spread and ride that one out in the second half. Specifically, I did this with the Zion Williamson Duke team because they love to mess around in the first half and then blow things open in the second half. Um, but yeah, if you guys want to take part in that, head on over to bet online. You can also look up the IU football uh, line. They are a plus 40 against Ohio state this week. Godspeed. If you're betting on that, uh, bet online is always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. 
Let's talk the women's basketball team who open up their season tonight. It is IU versus Vermont at 7 p.m. Should be a fun one. It's in Assembly Hall. It is also on BTN+. Plus. Um, it is the first meeting between these two programs. It does not mean that Vermont does not have a tie to Indiana, at least the state, because there are a pair of Hoosiers on the team. Emma Utterback, I believe is how you pronounce it, uh, is a senior from Greenwood from Center Grove. Uh, no word if she knows Trace. Maybe there's a, a friendship there that uh, they'll get to meet up again on, on this week. Uh, but Delaney Richeson from Zionsville is also on this team. Uh, just an oddity that two Vermont players are on this team. Honestly, good for them because this means that I assume their families are going to be in attendance uh, for this game. And I don't want to say everybody grows up an IU fan, but if you're a basketball player, you at least know what Assembly Hall is. So I'm sure that that's a moment for them as well. So fair play to them. I assume that might have played a role in Vermont coming here to play this game. As it pertains to opening season games for IU basketball, they are a, they have won their last 10 in a row. I don't suspect this one's going to be any different. Uh, Vermont, a overmatched team in this one. So what are going to be the storylines to watch? Well, just in general, something maybe I'm not mentioned enough, first game jitters. Ray Thompson talked about that um, after the game that uh, – there's some first game jitters there for IU basketball. So that's a thing that exists. Um, there's a lot of newcomers on this women's team. We will see if those first game jitters are there for them as well. The biggest thing though, is how deep is IU going to go? Um, similar to the men's team, there is more depth, more quality depth on the women's roster this season. We saw them go nine deep in the first quarter of the exhibition game, doing it in an exhibition game versus doing it in a regular season game are two different things. We'll see if, uh, if they do it in this actual game, if they play nine deep, I think they legitimately can. And I would suspect that for a while, it'll at least be eight or nine deep. Uh, with this rotation. Who's going to be the starters, I suppose, are is another question. We thought Sydney Parrish was going to start. Yarden Garzon did start. Uh, Parrish played well, not that Garzon didn't. Uh, we'll see how things shake up. Sydney Parrish was the first one off the bench. Maybe it's just sixth woman of the year for her, uh, and she's going to be that first person off the bench. It's also going to be interesting to see how IU adds its new players into the fold, whether it is Parrish, whether it is Garzon, whether it is Sarah Scalia. Um, there's a number of freshmen that are going to be uh, stepping into new roles, bigger roles uh, for the transfers as well, uh, different roles for the transfers as well. How are this, is everyone going to be kind of incorporated together and figure this one out? Um We'll see. It's going to be a challenge early on this season for Terry Moore and for this IU basketball team to uh, just get everybody, get that chemistry back and get everybody, I don't want to say on the same page necessarily, but just kind of build up a familiarity, I guess is a better way of saying it with one another, uh, because they too do not have um, much time to figure things out because a week from Monday, a week from yesterday, uh, they will be in Tennessee to play uh, the volunteers. So they get Vermont tonight. They get UMass Lowell on Friday and then they get Tennessee on Monday. So it's going to be a, a challenge right away. So how quickly IU comes out of the gates and figure some things out is going to be interesting to note in this one. Thanks again, guys, for making Locked on Hoosiers your first listen every day. We'll be back with you tomorrow to talk, to recap the women's game. We also have a conversation with Jason Jordan to talk IU basketball recruiting. Uh, so we'll have that tomorrow as well. For your next listen, check out the Locked on Sports Today podcast. 
the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to the podcast. All of that great stuff. Most importantly, though, guys, go Hoosiers. Pick up a win to kick off their season tonight. And as always, Elio.